In this video, we are going to try to understand if it is good or not to play retro gaming, I mean old games with low resolution, on a CRT PC monitor. I have made a, a first video a few months ago, which is called uh, Retro Gaming, why CRT TV is better than LCD uh, and, and PC monitor. In that video, I have shown uh, he, he, by approaching the camera on the screen to see at pixel level what's happened. What's happening? I have shown that it is better to use a CRT TV for low resolution games. Okay, but at that time I didn't have any CRT PC, CRT PC monitor. So now that I have one. I'm going to show the same kind of example that I did on the first video, but this time for the CRT PC monitor. So this current video is a kind of complement of the first video that I suggest you have a look, if not yet. Here is the CRT PC monitor. It's rather a small one. It's about 15 or even 14 inches of diagonal. So it's quite a small one. <coughs> And it's a pity because uh, I would have preferred to have a bigger one. I would have preferred uh, to have a 21 inch uh, monitor because the comparison with, with the TV would have been better, better because I have a TV with, which is 21 inch. So it would have been better to have a 21 inch PC monitor also to, for the comparison. But in fact, I had one, but uh, I sold it uh, recently. So now I only have this little one. Other thing is that uh, this CRT PC monitor uh, has a shadow mask which will deliver some phosphor with an, a certain shape. Phosphor, in fact, uh, with a shape of little circle, which is not the case of my TV. My TV is a trinitron TV, and the trinitron is a technology with a, not a shadow mask but an aperture grill which, give deliver, which delivers some phosphor of a different shape. Uh, than the shadow mask. So one must remind that the phosphor when doing the comparison between the TV and this CRT PC monitor will not have the same uh, aspect. And that's also a pity because my previous monitor 21 inch was a trinitron. So now let's go closer to the CRT PC monitor and let's have a look at the examples I have shown in the first video for the CRT TV and let's see what's happening on this monitor. Here we are in front of this first example. So you remember in my previous video, this uh, image is made of four lines, one uh, red, one green, one blue, one white line, and each line is made of only one pixel. And in the center, uh, you have uh, some uh, intensity which is increased compared to the edge, edges. So we, have, we can see here that the effect of bleeding is present but is quite moderate compared to the CRT TV. So we can see that the eighth of the line is bigger at the center than that than uh, on the edge. So this is the effect but it's not uh, very very flagrant compared to CRT TV. Let's have a look on CRT TV to remember how it looks like. You see that uh, the effect is much bigger. And now let's look on the LCD. You see that on the LCD there is almost no bleeding. Okay? Now we are back to the CRT PC monitor. And there is something that I would like to mention. Uh, I, I would like to say uh, this is that I call this effect the phosphor bleeding in my first video. But now I realize that this effect is not only the phosphor bleeding, but it's a mix between two effects. So there is some phosphor bleeding. This is what you see when looking at the circle. The circle at the center has a bigger diameter than a circle, I mean a phosphor uh, uh, at uh, the edge. This is the phosphor bleeding, but there is another effect. The effect is that in fact, the eighth of the line, which is bigger at the center, is due to the fact that the 
the diameter of the electron beam in the vertical direction and probably in all direction uh, gets bigger when the intensity of the of the image pixel is higher so this explains why the height of the line gets bigger at the center that on the edge this is because the pixel is brighter, the image pixel is brighter, and then the diameter of the electron gun gets bigger. Now I am going to move backward the camera, because now the camera is completely stuck to the screen, and I'm going to move it backward in order to put it at the same distance from the screen than it was uh, f f when, I, when I captured the CRT TV example. Okay. So here I put it at about between 5 cm to 10 cm. It was like this when I when I put the when I uh, when I have captured the CRT TV uh, example so that we have a nice perfect comparison between both. Here it is with the good focus. So here it is. So now you can see that uh, at this distance uh, the lines are very very narrow. I mean everything is very small and the effect of bleeding happens on a very very small scale uh, compared to what happens for the CRT TV. Let's have a look again at the CRT TV. Here is CRT TV with camera at the same distance. So you can see that this effect happens on a very very small scale. Okay, And when you will you will display your picture, your image of your game on the on the on full screen, and you will be sat at a distance about one meter. Then, this effect on a on a CRT PC monitor will happen on such a small scale that it will be negligible. Well, it is not the case for the CRT TV. Okay, and this is the main point to understand. Okay, this is the, the main point is that all these CRT effects that exist uh, both for the uh, PC monitor and for the CRT TV, on the PC monitor they happen on a very very small scale. And when the image is displayed on a full screen, this small scale is negligible compared to the full screen. So this is true also for the second point that I'm going to explain now. Here is the second point that I called the horizontal overlapping overlapping of the pixels due to the analog behavior of the CRT device. So as a reminder, on the left you have some blue, the, the image is, is decomposed of two parts, on the left some blue and on the right some green. Okay, and the transition should be perfectly delimited. There is no overlapping in the original image. Here on the CRTPC monitor, we can see that there is some overlapping. Some blue pixels are going on the right side in this and also this column, and some green pixels are going on the left side, okay, here. And also, there are some pixels here that are going on the left side. Unfortunately, it is uh, quite hidden by this kind of, of blue spreading everywhere. I don't know why, why there is blue everywhere. There should be blue only on the little blue phosphors. But there is some blue that is spread everywhere, a kind of glow. I don't know this effect, why it is, but it's not very important. What is important is to see that there is some overlapping. So. What is overlapping? Please refer to the first video where I try to explain a little bit why there, why there is a, an a horizontal overlapping. So the, the, the overlap is done on about, about, uh, about one or two columns of phosphor, which is a little bit the same as for the CRT TV. Let's have a look at the CRT TV. On the CRT TV, there is also this, this overlapping effect which happens also on about one or two columns of phosphor. Now let's have a look on the LCD. On the LCD, there is no overlapping at all. And uh, that's normal because it's a numerical device. So there is no electron beam, electron gulp that scan the screen. And thus, uh, there is no reason to have some overlapping. 
back to the to the CRT PC monitor and now I'm going to to move the camera backward like I did for the first first example. I move it backward from about 10 centimeters in order to put it focus is now adjusted in order to put it at the same distance that than the camera was when I I, I filmed the CRT TV example. <clears throat> so you can see that at about uh, 10 centimeters from the screen now the overlapping effect is not visible anymore. So you have understood that this effect exists but when the image is displayed on a big portion of the screen then the effect becomes negligible. Now we are going to have a look at a real game image the head of Mike Hagar. Let's go. Here we are in front of the head of Mike Hagar in Final Fight. The game is displayed in full screen on my CRT PC monitor that is on the 14 inches of the screen and we can see that some regions are pixelized. Uh, typically you can see here you have some kind of blocky pixelized uh, aspect of the image. Also look at the for example look at the moustache okay it's uh, like a, like a kind of square or rectangle also in the hair some parts are very blocky so let's have a comparison with the lcd monitor here it is on a 21 inch lcd monitor full screen so it is very very blocky very aliased Okay, now on the CRT TV, it is not aliased at all, as we have seen in the previous video. Let's go back on the CRT PC monitor. So why is the CRT PC monitor blocky, but not as blocky as the LCD? Here is the point where, uh, that I mentioned at the beginning, where I wanted to have a 21-inch CRT PC monitor. Unfortunately, it's only a 14-inch monitor, so the blotty, blocky effect is a little bit limited. And I'm sure that if I had a 21-inch CRT PC monitor, the image would have been would have been much more blocky. Maybe not maybe not as blocky as on the LCD monitor, but uh, much more than this, okay? But unfortunately, I don't have this 21-inch uh, monitor. But anyway, we can see that even on a 14-inch monitor, it's quite blocky compared to the CRT TV. Now I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to display the whole image of the game on my CRT PC monitor but limit the game will be limited uh, on, a, on a window which size it, it is adjusted in order that it it is displayed on the same number of phosphor that my TV has okay so my TV has about 450 phosphors in the horizontal direction. This CRT PC monitor has about 1200 phosphors. In fact, it has a number of phosphors that is a little bit over the maximum resolution of, of the screen. This screen goes to a resolution up to about 1024 uh, pixels uh, in horizontal so it has I think about 1200 phosphors so in fact there are about three times more phosphors on the CRT PC monitor in the horizontal direction than on the CRT TV so if I display the game on a window that is about three times uh, the size of the full screen three times lower than the size of the full screen, then it will be displayed on about 450 phosphors. Of course, it's about, but it's about the same number of phosphors than it is when it is displayed in full screen on the CRT TV. So let's go. 
So here we are, a window which has been adjusted in the horizontal direction to about 450 phosphor, so the same than the TV when displayed in full screen. And we can see here that the image is not uh, blocky uh, at all anymore. Uh, and in fact, it looks like very much uh, what we see on the TV. Here is the CRT TV. So it's not exactly the same, but we can explain the differences. The differences are due to, first, the scan lines on the CRT TV, not present on the PC monitor. Second, the shape of the phosphors. I have explained that my CRT TV is a trinitron, which is uh, an aperture grill which delivers some phosphor with the shape you can see here, some kind of ovals spreaded in the vertical direction, while the CRT PC monitor is a shadow mask, so the phosphors are nice circles. And the third point is the fact that on the TV, there is more vertical phosphor bleeding. So if I could add a CRT PC monitor, which uh, would have been a trinitron, and imagine I would have added a scanline generator to it, then the two first points, the two first difference would, ha would have been removed, and only the vertical bleeding would have been left here, and the image would be very, very, very similar. Back to the CRT PC monitor. So it's not blocky. Let's try to understand why it's not blocky. <clears throat> For example, let's focus on one item of the image, the brace of the trouser. You can see that the brace is not blocky at all. This is due to the fact that the brace is displayed on a number of phosphor, which is not too big compared to the number of phosphor on which the overlapping effect happened. The brace is displayed on about four or five phosphors and the overlapping effect, as we have seen previously, is up, happens on about one or two phosphors. So what is important is this ratio, five over two or five over one, which in the in final is not too big. And this is, is that must be the case for any elements of the of the any features of the image, for example, the, the eye, the hair, the moustache, everything must be the ratio between their the, uh, uh, number of phosphor and the overlapping effect number of phosphor must not be too big. So that the features are smoothened by this overlapping effect. And we can see that the brace is smoothened. For example, let's look at these little phosphors on the edge, which are not completely black, but are slightly illuminated. So this is, this is the overlapping effect, which, make, which makes that the, uh, these uh, phosphors are slightly illuminated. Because in the original image, they should have, they should have been uh, completely black. Let's have a look at the original image. This is the original image. So it is the game, the same head of Mike Hagar, displayed on the LCD monitor, but with a perfect uh, one by one ratio between the number of, uh, of pixels of, of the original image and the number of pixels on which it is displayed on the LCD. So this Y by one display, uh, let us uh, be sure that uh, there is no stretching or resizing of the image. And we have we really have here the, the native image, the, the original image as it was designed. And we can see on the brace that, that there, there are some black, black pixels here that have disappeared uh, in the CRT PC monitor when displayed on a, a limited number of phosphors. They have disappeared because the illuminated phosphors, illuminated pixels of the brace have overlapped, have bleeding in the horizontal direction on these black pixels. And what is interesting also to mention here is that the original image is blocky. You can see that the brace is blocky, everything here is blocky, and this is because the original image has a low resolution. And this is the, the, the greatness of the, of the CRT device, is to be able to 
pro to deliver an image that finally is not blocky while at the original it was, provided the overlapping effect is not negligible. Well, sometimes I feel I'm repeating 100 times the same things, but anyway, the important is to be clear. Now it's time to draw some conclusions. So I think you have understood that I don't encourage people to use CRT PC monitor in order to play sprite based games from the mid 90s and before. Why? Well, because a CRT PC monitor when displayed on a full screen tends to behave as a LCD monitor. All the advantages of the analog behavior of the CRT disappear when displayed on a full screen, when the uh, uh, retro gaming is displayed on a full screen. There are some exceptions. I think you can play on some old mid 80s CRT monitors that gives good image. I mean, I'm talking about these monitors for some computers like uh, Commodore 64. These are mo CRT PC, CRT mo these are CRT monitors, but with bigger, bigger dot pitch and bigger focus that should give a better rendering of the, of the images for retro gaming. And there is also these professional Sony monitors which are called PVM, which gives very nice image. Uh, sometimes some people even prefer uh, the PVM compared to a C PVM compared to a, a CRT TV. But these professional monitors are not easy to find and are still quite expensive. While a CRT TV only costs, uh, 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 I don't know, 20 or 30 uh, euros uh, on second hand. So I hope you found this video interesting and I hope soon to post other technical videos talking about phosphor and things like, like this. Bye.